So, um, the trial of the century or the trial of the pandemic era is finally over. It's all done now. We finally got some closure on this whole Juicy Smollett debacle. I think Juicy Smollett debacle came before Megan Thee Stallion and Tory, right? Yeah, but I think there were the two big events that happened during the pandemic that sort of gripped the world, right? Or maybe the Western world, or maybe everyone else didn't care about it. But in general, we probably paid far far too much attention to this stuff because we were all bored at, at home, wanting to distract ourselves from all the misery of people dying all over the place from COVID. So we got some ample distractions based on these celebrities and these influencers, whatever, you, well, singers and rappers, whatever it is, when they put themselves in trouble or they put themselves in the midst of trouble at Joseph Smollett did and it provided us with a lot of real entertainment and I think my weird theory about this is that they were really unlucky in terms of timing I think when it comes to Joseph Smollett and Tory Lanez and Megan Stallion in terms of the unbridled attention that their cases got because I think at the time we were all bored and at home nothing to do and also it was peak podcast listening time people were kind of gorging and flipping you know devouring them it's kind of you know what's that word called um when you would eat too much you know, whatever that words was on kind of a murder mystery and all that sort of kind of murder investigation podcast, they were going through the roof, but you know, networks are signing these things up all over the place. And everyone kind of felt like a mini detective kind of digging deep and kind of finding out the truth on these matters. I remember at a time I was checking out this Chicago based police report blog thing that had like a tracker on it that would auto generate um, things that were going down. Like I, I knew, we were all doing crazy stuff. You know what I mean? Like in terms of investigating everything in terms of his family and his connections with the judges, and all this like crazy stuff was going on so that's why i think they were a little bit unlucky in terms of the public perception and how you know the court of public opinion basically fell in terms of those two cases because people had too much time on their hands and they were really invested because of all the other sort of like extracurricular stuff they were doing listening to all those other things in terms of serial killers and other blah 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 crimes that go on but the just let thing really captured our imagination because at the time as well you know trump was president of the united states all that MAGA stuff was going on the sort of like um race situation in states from afar it felt like it was like at a breaking point bursting at the seams trump was doing these dog whistles you had the proud boys here like loads of stuff was going at the same time and it felt like ah. you know i think baked galaxy baked alaska and all those kind of IRL streamers were popping up all over the place doing their thing you had that guy with the long fingers um nick fuentes he was around you know it felt like there was something happening in the states at that time and then out of nowhere this guy comes out jesus smollett and it's like oh yeah in the dead of winter, I was assaulted by these two white nationalists wearing MAGA hats who said MAGA country beat me up and put a noose around my neck and sent me on my way. But let me keep my sandwich, right? My Subway sandwich. And everyone immediately, I think, when you first heard the story, similar to the Megan Stallion and Tory Lane situation, when you immediately heard the story, you sympathize with the victim. I remember when I first heard it, like, oh my God, that's flipping heartbreaking, isn't it? Because I only got introduced to Justice Mollett because of an interview he did on The Breakfast Club, which I really enjoyed. He came across really charming, and again, in an actor kind of way, right? Where they're kind of, they're fake and they kind of acclimatized to the environment. He really kind of disarmed Charlemagne. Like he did, he was really good in, that, in The Breakfast Club. I really enjoyed the interview. He came across really well. Um, and, I, you know, you kind of went to root for him in a kind of, you know, nice sort of like root for him way from afar. You don't really know the guy, blah, 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 blah. And I haven't watched a single episode of the Empire. I don't really know nothing about him on there. Apart from he's a gay character, right? On there, oh, he was a gay character on there. So when that thing, so it felt like, you know, it felt like it happened in the sequence. I found out about this guy a couple of weeks before. Then the incident happens. I'm like, oh man, that really sad. And then you start to read more about it. And you're like, hold on, this doesn't make any sense, right? And then you start to get, hear more accounts from people who live in the area. Because that's the thing with social media these days. Everyone lives somewhere close to or knows somebody in that area can provide a little bit of context so somebody was like no the area that he was going to or he went to go to subway it's like in a very sort of businessy districty sort of area there's not anything around there just offices and whatever and you know some shops but it's not like a place where people just walk around you know outside of office hours just parade you know I mean? it's just something like that so that doesn't make any sense the time that he went out it was super cold minus something you know uh snowstorm happened like crazy stuff was adding to context of it that was making it really unbelievable that what juicy says happened could have happened and same happened with Tory Lanez and Meg Thee Stallion, right? You hear that story, like, oh, Meg got shot in the foot. Then you start to add more context situation, more stories come out. The best friend falling out, the Kylie situation, Tory maybe flirting with her, the bullet fragment things didn't make any sense. She was twerking the, the next day. It all didn't add sense. And again, 
they're both unlucky because we had too much time on their hands. And then, of course, as time went on, you know, just Smollett's account of the story was made to be completely redundant and everyone kind of, you know, came away from it thinking he definitely, definitely was lying. The only person who really was riding for Juicy Smollett hardcore was Amanda Seals. And she was, I felt like, it, even looking back on it now, as ridiculous as it sounded when it came out of her mouth, she was mostly riding on him off the back of like, why can't we get away with scamming too? Like, I think Joe, Joe Budden said it a couple of times too, how he just roots for like black scammers. I think when he was trying to defend, um, what's her face? That black lady who scammed um, Dave East, not Dave East, who scammed um, uh, Jonah Lucas. What's her name, man? Anyway, you know what I'm talking about, right? He was just standing up for her because he was like, oh, we, we should be able to scam too. But it was like, yeah, at the, well, at the, at the disadvantage of our own people, whatever. But Amanda Seals just came out of the blue and said, nah, white people will be calling police for fake instances all the time, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Let's prosecute. Let's, let's give them the same energy. But of course that wasn't going to happen because Judge Smollett is a prominent figure. He was, it was a race riot -y kind of thing that he was trying to think. It was just mad. And it made me think when I was thinking about this whole situation, how sad it is because, again, judging by the headline, as you can see on the screen, it was obviously, uh, it was sentenced yesterday and Judge Smollett has been sentenced to 150 days in jail and 30 months felony probation, right? Judge calls him arrogant, selfish, narcissist. So, you know, it's over. And of course, there's the mugshot. And the first thing that made me think about whole situation, I was looking at him sat there with his head shaved, you know, the cur the luscious curls that he had were gone, the kind of angelic -y, sweet, light-skinned face, like, cute guy I remember what him on the breakfast club he had like a nice shirt blouse thing with the buttons all undone near to you know you know in a really aggressively way undone maybe like six buttons undone with his chest showing out feeling good feeling smooth just really living life at the top of his powers right just imagine a guy like him super talented can sing can act you know smashing your empire maybe go and do next some other things and going forward you know he felt like the world was in his hands and then suddenly a snap of a wrist or a flick of a wrist you know He's concocting this ridiculous plan and he, he sat in a courtroom basically hoping that he doesn't get any jail time so he can continue his career. But you know it's going to end really poorly for him. And it's just like, wow, man. Crazy that he did all of this just so he could get a flipping raise on Empire. A show that, you know, no one bloody cares about now after he got cancelled, which, which might have got cancelled because of what he did in the first place. So he might have inadvertently cost the jobs of many different people during that time, especially during the pandemic. You're thinking, God damn it, man. Like, why? And you'd imagine Empire would have been far more successful during the pandemic because no one had anything to do and we're all at home watching stuff. They would have probably renewed it and it would probably up to salary anyway. It was just a mad thing, right? Like, because I think the judge even said during, a, during his sort of dressing down, which was aggressive, the judge absolutely ripped um, flipping Jesus Smollett a new one right ripped him a new one really really went in on him more so because I felt like he just felt like it was a whole waste of time from what you know him sitting on that perch basically looking down and analyzing evidence like why are we here this guy clearly lied admit your fault so we can all go home you're wasting everyone's time here and he clearly didn't um, because you know I think as most liars I would imagine if you're if you're a liar if you're a liar anyway and you're a narcissist you just have to die with your lie there's no point where you can sit down and say, you know what, I'm upon reflection, I put my hands up. That's not what you do if you're a liar, liar. If you're a liar, liar, you take that lie to the grave. You take it grave to the grave. I lied and I'm going to hold on to it. And because he was, he went this far wrong, because I don't think he believes, you know, that he's innocent deep in his heart. I just think he has to play up to it. Because at this point, if you do admit it and you say you lied, there's probably going to be more questions asks about you and you're going to be grilled and ripped more and probably you're going to be you know not looked upon as somebody that could either be trusted ever again ever no one's going to give you time of day so you might as well risk the opportunity to try and win people back by just sticking with a lie as he clearly did anyway throughout the entire thing and obviously the reaction to it in the courtroom was absolutely blockbuster First of all, we play a clip of the judge absolutely ripping into Justice Smollett and basically telling him how he really feels about him. And I feel like this was, to me, the most important part of the court case, of the sentencing, because even if he didn't get jail time, he didn't spend time in prison, which, I, I, again, I, I'm, I'm in a minority here, but I, let, I honestly think as more time went on, especially with my Catholic, somewhat Christian upbringing, even though I don't go to church anymore, a part of me felt like, you know what? Just let, you know, find a guy, community service, 
maybe he has to publicly admit that he lied and let him go on with his life because this is a this is a kind of victimless crime thank god right because you know he was clearly trying to blame it on some white nationalists so imagine if they didn't find the osandaria brothers and they and they managed to find some random couple of white dudes who had some really derogatory things to say about black people anyway you know what i mean he could have got some innocent people locked up and that would have been absolutely mad it was a victimless crime he did it to obviously advance his own career it failed miserably he's been exposed and revealed to everybody you know that kind of has any common sense about how he is as a person that's punishment enough time has gone on you know what I mean? like just let him kind of ride with it but i thought this was also an important moment because the judge said eloquently and very matter-of-factly what he felt what he kind of thought of jussie as a person right and the kind of damage this whole thing has done to his reputation and to the cause that he fights for. And I think it's very important for him to hear, even if he didn't get jail time, he needed to hear this. And um, I think it needed to be said in front of cameras too. So it could be recorded of like, okay, cool. This is what people actually think of you after this court case. We're all thinking this, even though we have sympathy for the situation in some regard, this is ultimately what we think of you. And regardless of how you do it, you move on. You need to keep this in the back of your head. That's a good question. I think that's the question on everybody's mind. There's some conjecture you did it for the money. Frankly, I do not believe that you did it for the money. You were making, the evidence showed, close to $2 million a year when this happened. I don't think money motivated you at all. But the only thing I can find is that you really craved the attention and you wanted to get the attention and you were so invested in issues of social justice and you knew that this was a sore spot for everybody in this country. You knew this was a country that was slowly trying to heal uh, past injustices and current injustices and trying to make a better future for each other and it was a hard road and you took some scabs off some healing wounds and you ripped them apart for one reason you wanted to make yourself more famous and for a while it worked everybody was talking about you the lights were on you you were actually throwing a national pity party for yourself and why would you do such a thing why would you i, I understand you crave the attention so much but why would you betray something like social justice issues, which you care so much about? And the only thing I can conclude is that, is, and I acknowledge, there are wonderful sides to you. They're, they're very giving and charitable and loving sides to you. But you have another side of you that is profoundly arrogant and self, selfish and narcissistic. That's the only thing that can be concluded. And that bad side of you came out during the course of all these events. That's a good question. Which you needed to hear, Jeremy. You know amazing dressing down and i think a lot of people were basically feeling and then i think the judge did a real big misdirect when he came to sentencing because he basically announced the probation first before he announced the jail time and everyone's like oh my god really after all this dressing down and drama you're just gonna give him probation and community service like come on and then he hit him with the 150 days in jail and supposedly from what i read in the state that he's in you can't if it's under a certain amount of days you go to jail instead of going to prison which you would assume is far worse because you're in you're in people you're you're in there with people under random circumstances, yeah, under random charges, right? Anything from a DUI to a kidnapping to an assault, do you know what I mean? It's, or people that are trans, maybe uh, they get they they're there for a short period and they're going to get transferred to another place. Like it's the most random place I'd imagine in terms of going to jail. You'd far probably prefer to go to a you know high security prison somewhere so you can just be left alone on your own. This is going to be interacting with general pop people. They're going to be ripping into him. The fact that he's gay probably won't help. Like it's going to be an absolute nightmare situation for him in that regard. And it's just so unnecessary of a situation because it's like why why do this? Like what what was the gain? But if you think about it, the gain was this to be on the biggest stage. Like, this is basically has been one of his biggest roles ever. Is he ever going to get a role bigger than this? This is like a live action movie, a live drama in real time and in real dramatic, pure, pure theatre kid energy. You know, the kind of kid in class that was to be or not to be and, you know, doing flipping Hamlet on the table and drumming everywhere, singing, dancing, showing off to everyone. Right. This is the kid. This is the end of it. When when that kind of confidence is not reined in, when he doesn't get taken the piss out of sometimes here and there, and he's let free to do what he wants, he turns into this animal. And at the end of the sentencing, when he's asked, do you have anything to say? Dutra Smollett said the following. Yes, Your Honor, that I am, uh, I am not suicidal. That's what I was about to say. Okay. I am not suicidal. Okay. I am not suicidal. <laughs> I am innocent, and I am not suicidal. Yeah. 
If I did this, then it means that I stuck my fist in the fears of black Americans in this country for over 400 years and the fears of the LGBTQ community. Your Honor, I respect you and I respect the jury, but I did not do this. And I am not suicidal. And if anything happens to me when I go in there, I did not do it to myself. And you must all know that. I respect you, Your Honor. I respect your decision. Jail time. <laughs> I am not suicidal. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Uche. <laughs> what an absolute psycho. Obviously, he's trying to um, elicit the spirit of Sandra Bland, RIP, and all those other situations where, um, you know, black people in America were arrested for some innocuous con accusation or charge. And then for some weird twist of fate they suddenly ended up passing away in prison or in jail or under the supervision of a police officer right and most of these cases haven't been sort of um dealt with or concluded in any sort of meaningful way which is heinous right the fact that he's trying to draw upon that but it makes sense because if you remember in the i think in some of the statements that are read by his family members i forgot who it was but some of his family read a statement where they basically said that oh um as part of his character sort of like statement what is it, what's it called is it character statement or character so whatever it's, that word is as a way to kind of demonstrate how good of a guy juicy is they read they said something like oh he attended um trayvon mont trayvon martin's angel jubilee or something and maybe contributed money i was like excuse me you are eliciting the name of a dead kid right to kind of what to give you to make you look good so you don't get jail time off the back of a crime that didn't happen like what the hell is happening here like really i was like oh my god this his whole family are redacted his whole family are redacted but the hit again for me the most heinous thing on this entire situation is definitely when it comes to his mother not the grandmother i think his mother I, i'm pretty sure i remember seeing a clip this might have been uh when it was when the court case when the court when the court date or whatever the, the trial was over right they're doing those press conferences in the wherever the place they were in i think the, wherever the court i'd imagine and uh do, 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 do. yeah so the the, the prosecution or defense whatever it is um the lawyers they did they gave their statements on the little pulpit in front of the doors and then at the end everyone wrapped up and were going home and the cameras were still running and then you saw people that were still in the courtroom started to leave because i guess they couldn't leave because that little press conference was happening and the, they were blocking the door so the cameras are still running and what you saw and then i think the the news report basically got on camera basically saying yeah here we are they've just wrapped up we're gonna the sentence is gonna happen on this date blah, blah 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 and in the corner the back of the camera you can see two black ladies holding another really frail looking older lady who's kind of like struggling to walk and the news report said oh that's Juju smollett's mum who happens to be she's not that old but i guess she's got some sort of health complications or something along that kind of lines where she was really struggling to walk and two women were basically holding her up and someone and i think the news report says something like oh she's been here every day at the trial supporting her son and i was like oh my god what a piece of shit he dragged his mum to court every single day knowing full well that he lied about the situation that he lied about that incident knowing that you know she's frail she probably you know I'm, I'm i'm sure the stress is you know as much as stress is affecting him just imagine how much it's affecting his mum. and he's doing this with good conscience that's why i knew he was a real sicko that's why i knew justice millet was a real sicko because i think nothing we can say is ever going to shame him into making him feel bad about what he did but you would imagine you would hope that looking your mum in the eye and lying about something that happened like that would make you feel a little bit bad and you might be like you know what i can't see my mum. I can't put my parents or my family through this anymore. I'm going to jet. Like, I can't be seen coming in hand in hand, arm in arm, locked in with my sisters and other people in my family and making them complicit in my life because they're standing next to me. I can't do this anymore. And just admit it, right? You'd think you'd do that, but he didn't. And he just kind of r ride it out the entire thing. And, you know, he fought towards the end. And I think I'm in a minority here, but I think it was probably the right decision to make to just keep fighting and basically, you know, lying that you basically didn't lie and standing on the lie until the day that you die i think that might be the best solution because think about it this way there's still a pop there's still a small segment of people out there who believe jussie and think that he was a victim of a hate crime and he obviously is leading into that so if he comes out he's in a far better position to just stand there and say you know what i'm actually after spending that time in prison or in jail sorry for three months 
I've actually gained a new understanding um, for the struggles and the, you know, yeah, the struggles people like myself are having with the judiciary system and being locked up unfairly or incorrectly, the conditions that we face, especially being the LGBTQ plus person. Like, he for sure is going to use this as a thing. So don't be surprised once he comes out, if he does a documentary, um, some sort of film, some sort of feature, a podcast, something concerning how he was imprisoned or jailed for a crime that he feels like he didn't do for sure or for a crime that he feels he was a victim of as a as a in terms of the perp or as opposed to the perp um and a good example of it is this reaction too at the end of it where he basically rose up his fist like a freedom fighter like he thought he was nelson mandela or something i am not suicidal <laughs> i am not suicidal and i am innocent i could have said that i was guilty a long time ago what a crazy guy in it i don't know what that lady said when she said it so say stop saying something about whatever but yeah what a crazy guy he died on his lying sword i think that is a way to go out if you're gonna lie you need to just lie all the way until the end so you know do your thing bad boy do your thing but god almighty what an absolute horror show. But I'm glad it's over. To be honest, I'm glad it's over. I'm glad I don't have to see it on my timeline anymore. We can just all move on, hopefully, and just live a far more fruitful life knowing that this thing is now finally, finally over.